On the top here I have a DPO 2024. Uh, they just went to a DPO 2024B as the current product. I don't think there's really any difference between them other than that the 2024B has a really good warranty of five years. So apparently these are pretty reliable. And then the venerable TDS 3012B that can be had all the way out to um, 500 megahertz bandwidth and 5 giga samples per second. This one is 1.25 giga samples per second, 100 megahertz bandwidth. This guy up here is one giga sample per second, 200 megahertz. That's on all channels simultaneously. This one, of course, is a two channel scope with the trigger. This one is four channels with the trigger. And I'm taking a look at the glitch cape capture. And I have a quick start eight. DPO demo board that Tech used for the 7000 series TDS scopes, 6000, well 7000s really, and it has a glitch feature that I use a lot to compare things. And I've got both displays set to um, infinite persistence. I can clear the persistence by hitting these buttons, and it seems like the much newer. DPO 2024 does capture glitches glitches faster. I don't know if I can get it to stay. Let me clear that out. It seems like like uh, I already caught caught another one over here. It seems like this scope, the 2024, captures them in you know 10 seconds or less. The one below seems typically 20 to 30 seconds to capture a glitch and you can see that it is running it has the run indication going there so it is actually doing something um, both have pretty good displays this is a quarter wide VGA screen and you can read read the font okay but I don't think there's any more pixels than what you'd find on a TDS 2000 or a 1000 this guy down here is a full VGA display and there's a little glitch it caught right down there. As you can see there's a lot more going on on the 2024 plus the 2024 right now it's set to its um, record length is um, 100,000 um, points or this guy down here I forget what they have like 10 points or something. So we can clear it again this one for the heck of it. So you know they caught those two about the same time, not the same glitch of course. The settings are the same on the screen. This horizontal is two microseconds per division on both of them and um, one volt per division and both 10 to 1 probes etc. It's just the aspect ratio on this screen is different. That's why the traces seem wider up here than down here. You can see there's a lot more activity. Sometimes the TDS 3000 will, you know, will be more active. Now this scope and the the other versions of it, like 500 megahertz, it it might capture glitches faster. Um, I can't recall if tech spec. I thought Tech said that these would do 50,000 waveforms per um, per second, whereas this one's like 5,000. But this one might do more so um, depending on um, how many channels or what the bandwidth is, because you know if the sampling rate is higher or something. But I I doubt if that makes too much of a difference. But I really don't know. But anyhow, if you're looking for glitches, it looks like. Like while the 3000 can do it, the 3000B can do it, the 2024, the DPO with its newer architectures is simply seeing that there's much more going on. You can see the scopes are close in size with one another. The DPO being a little bit wider, just slightly wider. If you can hear the fan noise, it's it's noticeable on the 3000, but it's not really noticeable in this setup on the 2000, the DPL 2024. 
So it's a, the DPL 2024 is a pretty quiet running machine. You can hear it though if it's the only thing running in the room. So anyhow, quick little comparison. The 3000s have been coming down in price rapidly. Um, you can you can get like a 3000 non B, which is doesn't have as good of a time base. I think is the only difference. Um, but for the hobbyist, you can um, pick up one for probably seven, seven fifty, 750, six fifty at auction if you're willing to wait. You can see the screen starting to look. I mean, if you if you left the uh, 3000 on long enough on a on a signal, you would ultimately probably end up with a similar display. So even running without infinite persistence, you see more activity on the, um, the top scope than the bottom scope. Notice that on the right, the uh, menu system is very similar to the TDS 3000, and that's because they share a lot in common. This is a descendant of the 3000 below. I don't know that I cap captured those glitches when I was looking at the side menu. There's some going on. Sometimes I get lucky and hit more than other times, but in general the, the top scope definitely is seeing more activity than the lower one. So I've told both scopes now to, to trigger on um, on the signal when they see a, um, a signal rise, or what is it, pulse width of 700 nanoseconds or greater. I think that's how you read that. Notice that both menu systems are actually quite similar. Um, on this scope, I'll give you the little cheat there. You actually get that up here if you um, click on that. You see the same thing. So anyhow, like on the on the upper scope, if I tell it to do a single, it doesn't take long at all for it to to find glitches. I'm pressing it again and again. Press it. Press it. So it finds it fine, and it's the same case with the um, the lower scope. They um, once you've defined what the glitch is, it doesn't take that long. Because it knows what to look for. Of course, the difference being this time that if I um, I lost it. It's in there somewhere. I just got to find it now. Yeah, there it is, right in the middle. There it all is. Down here. Let's see. If I go like that. There's not nearly the record though, <laughs> so that's one advantage of this guy up here. Turn it off. This guy up here. So once you know what the glitch looks like, it's actually very easy to trigger on, and that's true with any scope. But you know what you're looking for. The trick is, is on this scope, you got a bunch of lines to probe. It would take longer to find a glitch than on this scope up here. Although that might be a little different if you're um, in a different time base setting. But, but probably this scope up here has a better arc, the newer architecture, and is more capable in that regard. I guess one last thing worth mentioning um, as far as comparisons for a hobbyist is. Um, the TDS 3000 the, will accept active probes. This has uh, 50 ohm terminations in it, whereas this scope up here apparently doesn't have 50 ohm terminations. They have active probes you can use with it, but they're very expensive and you have to add a power brick to it. Whereas there's no power brick requirement, you can just plug an active probe into this. Um, active probes are really risky on eBay. You want to have a right of return if you're paying serious money for it, otherwise don't pay much at all because there's a very good chance they don't work. The probe tips in most active um, in most active probes there's a, a very thin ceramic circuit board at the tip, tech probes anyhow, and that is extremely easy to shatter and so you 
twisted too hard or something. So very often those boards are broken, but a lot of times just the little itty bitty wires that are powering the probe tip have broken at the probe tip and sometimes you can solder those back, but it's an iffy process. So it's something to keep in mind, but if you need um, an active probe, much cheaper on this scope down below than that scope up there. Um, also, this scope of course can do certain decoding whereas this one for the most part can't do decoding but this scope has applications that that scope can't do so um, either scope is a pretty good um, hobbyist scope and the two channel variants of these really haven't been showing up on eBay but um, they're not that expensive.